Hi there, my name is Lawrence Tyndall, and in today's ServiceNow tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a table in ServiceNow. Before we get started, let me quickly explain what a table is. A table is a collection of records in the database. Each record in a table corresponds to a row, and each field corresponds to a column. When you create an incident in ServiceNow, that record is being stored in the incident table, and when you create a hardware asset, that is being stored in the hardware asset table. Simply put, all records in the system are stored within a table. In today's tutorial, we're going to create a table for managing stockroom shelves. This will allow asset managers to understand what shelves are located within a stockroom, and this will enable them to specify what shelf each in-stock asset is located on. To get started, open up ServiceNow and in the Application Navigator, type in Tables. Click on the Tables module located underneath the System Definition application. You'll be navigated to the Tables list view, where you can see all of the tables in the system. Click on the New button. You'll now be navigated to a blank table record form. In the first field, Label, this field is used to describe the table and the type of records it'll be storing. In today's example, I'm going to enter stockroom shelves. As you can see, when I entered the label name, the field was automatically populated with the value of U underscore stockroom underscore shelves. This is the internal name of the table and cannot be changed once the table is being created. In the next field, extends table, this field is used to make an extension from another table and inherit the fields from that table. In today's example, we're going to leave this field empty since we don't need to extend today's table. To the right of the form, you have the Create module, Create Mobile module, Add module to menu, and New menu name fields. These fields are used to dictate whether you'd like this table to be created as a new module in the Application Navigator, and if so, whether you'd like to have it created as a standalone module or to have it included underneath an existing module menu. In today's example, we're going to add this table to the Asset module, so we're going to select the Asset module in the Add Module to Menu field. Now that we've completed the main fields on the table form, let's take a look at the related lists. In the first one, Columns, this is where you can create the columns that will be included in this table, also known as fields. For today's demo, we're going to add the following fields, Shelf Number, Shelf Aisle, Shelf Row, and Stockroom. These fields will be used to uniquely identify each shelf within each stockroom. For the Shelf Number, Shelf Aisle, and Shelf Row fields, I'm going to make them all string fields. Then for the Stockroom field, I'm going to make it a reference field that references the ALM underscore Stockroom table. That way, Asset Managers can select the stockroom that the shelf is part of. Now that we've finished creating the fields, let's go into the Controls Related List. Within this related list, you can define whether this table can be extended by other tables using the Extensible field. For this example, I'm going to leave this field unchecked, since we don't want other tables extending from this table. The next field, Live Feed, this field allows you to select whether you want Live Feed to be enabled for this table or not. For today's example, I'm going to leave this field unchecked, since we don't want to include this table in the live feed. Next, we have the Auto Number field. This field enables you to add auto numbering to all records within the table. Across the ServiceNow platform, you'll see this field used on tables such as Incident, Problem, and Change, etc. For today's example, we're going to leave this unchecked since we don't want to include auto numbering on our stockroom shelf records. In the final field, Create Access Controls, I'm going to leave this field checked and then select the Asset Role in the User Role field. This will allow users who have the Asset Role to be able to access and use this new table. Now in the final tab, Application Access, this tab is used to define whether the table can be accessed from all application scopes or not and whether they can read, create, update, or delete records. For today's example, I'm going to leave the selected options as they are. Now to complete the creation of this table, click on the Submit button. 
you'll now be taken back to the tables list view. Now if we go into the application navigator and type in stockroom shelves, you'll see that the module is now visible. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, we have a list view displaying the columns we just created when creating the table. And if we click on the new button, we're navigated to a blank stockroom shelf form. For demo purposes, let's create a stockroom shelf record. As you can see, we now have a stockroom shelf record within our newly created table. Now to connect this table to our hardware asset form, all we need to do is create a reference field on the hardware asset form called stockroom shelf and make it reference the stockroom shelf table. And it's as easy as that. Creating a table in ServiceNow is a fairly simple task and can be achieved within a matter of minutes. If you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe.